given us salvation. You are the one that has written our names in the book of life. You are the one that blesses us with the power to be worthy. Oh Lord, we can go on and on and on. All we are saying is that you are so good to us. And we say thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Once again, you have gathered your precious world before you. You are the reason for this gathering. And we pray, even as you have said in your word, that you did not call the seed of Jacob unto you in vain. Lord, I pray that nobody here will go back as they came. But Lord, they will go back blessed. They will go back enlightened. They will go back exalted. They will go back glorified. And as they step out into the world, your hand will manifest through them and Jesus will be glorified. And it will draw multitudes into this commission, into your kingdom, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. That you never leave us, you never forsake us. You are our teacher. Teach us again. Give us understanding. Bring light from your word to us and make us a better people that will bring glory to Jesus in every area of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory, Amen. glory be to Jesus. And uh, I'm not going to take too much time. I promise I'm going to rush through it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 10. And verse number 22, a very popular scripture, and we're still continuing on our subject of prosperity. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 22, the Bible says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he had no souls with it. Precious one, this scripture alone, I can talk for a whole week on just this scripture. The blessing of God is what maketh rich. He doesn't add souls to it. The blessing of God is what makes you and I rich. And he has no souls to it. And we have already 
talked about and established the fact that when we are talking about the blessing of God, it is the force of heaven that God releases upon a man. It is an empowerment that when God empowers you with the power of the blessing, everything in about you must express it. Amen. Everything. When God stamp on you the power of the blessing, it must find expression in your job. It must find expression in your body. It must find expression in your finances. It must find expression in your family, in your children, in your wife, in your husband. Anything that is connected to you will express it. You understand? Because it is upon you. It has been released upon you. You know, and in Christ, I have said it many times, we always have to understand that in Christ, prosperity is not an achievement. It's an endowment. You understand? That is why the Bible says, labor not to be rich. In other words, it is not going to, you are not going to be rich according to just your hard work. You understand? Because it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit. You understand? There is a place for work. There is a place for hard work, diligence. But then, something must be upon you so that your hard work will yield dividends into your life. You understand? If you are working hard without the power of the blessing, that is when life becomes miserable. You are working and working and working, but there is nothing to show for it. You are not benefiting from your hard work because that which makes you prosper is not released upon you. And so we have to understand that prosperity in Christ is more spiritual than physical. It's more spiritual. I mean, we have established here that life is spiritual. And so just like the devil, because he's the devil and he's wicked and he doesn't want anything good for anyone, he can put something on a man, spiritually speaking, so that whatever the person does, it doesn't work. You understand? He can go to school, he can have his PhD from the best colleges and whatever. And yet, anything he does, does not work. He can even teach people business. The people who do it, they will prosper, but he himself will do it. It will work. It will, it will fail. Because spiritually, something is upon him. And that which is upon him will, I mean, insist that nothing works. You see, that's the mystery of anointing. When God anoints you for a purpose, the anointing will insist. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And so, when it comes to the blessing, the Bible says, The blessings of God make it worthy. Amen. And he doesn't add any sorrows to it. And so we want to, we have already come to understand what the blessing is. When we go back to the beginning, God made man. And the Bible says, and God blessed man. And God told man, now have dominion. Now the word blessing there from the Hebrew uh, translation is empowerment. You see, a lot of us have distorted mindset when it comes to the word blessing because many people the moment they hear blessing all they think about is money you know but forget it money is just a byproduct of it but when we are talking of the blessing when the bible says god bless man god had made everything already before he blessed man and when god blessed man nothing more was added to what was already there so what's the blessing you understand the blessing when god made everything he now blessed man he empowered man to now have dominion over everything. So Adam was dominating everything, not because he was necessarily a man, but because was because of what was upon him, the power that insists that he dominate everything as a small god on earth. The moment that thing was off his life, he became ordinary. He was now running away from things that he used to dominate. Do you see the difference? So it's not just because he was a man, but because of what God put on him. And these are the things believers must understand. 
It's not just going to church. It's good that you go to church. It's not just going to church. You must position yourself and pay the price for having to release something upon you. Otherwise, in your Christianity, you still live like an ordinary person. Something must come upon you. Something must come from the throne of God and drop on your head. Just like David said, you anoint my head with oil, then my cup runs over. The anointing comes upon my head. The power of the blessing comes upon my head. And then it shows the proof is in my cup. My cup runs over. That is, figuratively speaking, prosperity. And because of what is upon me, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Come on, precious one, think about it. Who do you think you are? Goodness and mercy should follow you as an ordinary man. Goodness and mercy will not follow you because you got born again. No, let, let me be plain here. Goodness and mercy will not follow you because you are a human being. No. Goodness and mercy follows you because God has placed something on your head that attracts them. There is something about you that attracts them, spiritually speaking. Something is released upon you. Now, when you understand this thing, you will never bother yourself having issue with any human being. It's so irrelevant. It's so waste of time. You will never... Waste your time bearing grudges with people who forgive. No, no, it's, it's unnecessary. Focus on what you want God to bring upon your life. Something must come upon you. Something from above must be must drop on your head. The blessing of God is what makes rich. He has no sorrows. If it is from God, it comes with peace. It comes with good health. It comes with love for Christ. It comes with serving humanity. It comes with comfort. He adds no sorrows to it. What is happening in your life is by the invisible hand of the Almighty upon you. And so we see, we see the, the, the aroma of Christ all around you. We see the glory of God in all that is happening in your life because it is the blessing of the Lord that is speaking in your life. May that be your portion, everyone here, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The blessing. The blessing. The blessing. We are getting into a period in creation that men are going to be desperate the devil is losing poverty, sicknesses, frustration. I mean, he is determined to mess people up. If there is any time, <coughs> excuse me, if there is any time in the history of the church that we need to be blessed, it is now. Say it now. now. Say it now. now. It is now. Because the things that are about to be happening, precious one, we can't afford to live ordinary life. The things that are about to be happening, we have to come to a place where God anoints us to be exactly like Jesus. So that when you are caught in the middle of a situation and they say you must pay your tax right now, all you need is the hook and the river. And you speak, and money, the fish brings money. On the frequency of the supernatural. Now, if you're going to live an ordinary life, look about your life, look about yourself, look about the job, look at the money. Is that a kind of, wait a minute. Then forget about having a million, forget it. Because the 10,000 and 15,000 that you make a man, at the end of the month, if it is 15,000, 13,300 is gone. So how do you make million dollar investment? You think that is for the world? God forbid, it's for the church. You must be determined by, that by the blessing of God, a year by now, minimum, and I decree it to everyone here, minimum, 
the, the least person in this commission must not have less, less than $10 million investment. Amen. A year from today. Amen. Minimum. By the blessings of God. And I'm going to be asking you. Yes. You have to, I, I don't mention two million, three million. What do you mean? That one is for Danny and the others. <laughs> and I'm serious. It's going to happen because I've seen something. We just have to position ourselves. Stop depending on that job. Thank God for it. But you don't depend on it. You don't depend on that money. Depend on the, the greatness of God. His power, his faithfulness, and his mighty hands, what he's able to do. The Bible says, in thy hand it is to make rich, and in thy hand it is to make poor. In thy hand it is to lift up, in thy hand is the power to bring low. And he that giving you his son, he has demonstrated his life. You think he will die and save you and make you poor. He will die and save you and take you low. So if it is in the power of his son to make rich, why are you bothered? You, you understand what I'm saying? All we need to do is to position ourselves, come to the place of understanding that it is not by skills, it is not by job, it is not by education. Thank God for all that. But when it comes to becoming worthy, it is by his blessing. And he will not hold it back from me as long as I line up with him. The blessing. The blessing. The blessing. But you see, the blessing doesn't just come on anyone. Are you understanding me? I'll be a liar to tell you because you are born again. No, 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 no. It, it doesn't just come on anyone. The Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is important for us to understand that anything God is doing in our lives, He considers our heart first. Do you know you have to become a certain kind of a person for God to release His power of blessing on you? All of us are enjoying mercy drops. You understand? What we are enjoying is mercy drops. Mercy drop runners are falling. And for the showers, we bleed. Uh, you don't bleed the showers. You position yourself to become a certain person. The problem with many believers is who we are, the kind of attitude and heart that we have. God is careful to release the power for wealth. Because there are some that in India, if I should use that word, in their poverty, they are arrogant, they are proud, they are disrespectful as a poor person. So what do you think this person will do when God releases wealth? There are people in the church that when they are wrong, you can't even correct them. Their, their reaction, you, you, you regret it. And they are going through hard life. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. In other words, they, they will experience anything God, including the power to the world. That is why I always say that mind your heart. Mind your heart. Mind your heart. It is the blessings of God that make us worthy. But God knows those. He releases the blessing. Oh, everything many believers are enjoying is the mercy drop because God is merciful. So we are enjoying mercy drop. But when it comes to the blessing, <laughs> in the book of Psalm 89 and verse number 20, he said, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. By him, my hand shall be established. I will beat down all his enemies. 
Do you know the amazing thing about this? God said this about David when David had not even prayed. <laughs> and somebody is blowing in tongues from morning to night. And nothing is happening. David had not even prayed that Father, anoint me and let your hand be with me and make me a king. He, he never prayed that prayer. But God saw a certain heart in that young man. He said, yes, I have found what I'm looking for. I have found David, my servant. When somebody say, I have found, that means he was looking for it. Now he has found it. God was looking for a heart and he found it. May God find the heart that is pleasing to him in you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, let's, let's just concentrate our focus on doing things just to bring glory to our Lord Jesus. Because soon and very soon, everything is going to be over. This world will roll away. So let's concentrate our energy, our focus, everything on doing that which brings glory to our Lord Jesus. Because at the end of the day, I want Jesus Christ, my Lord, to look at my face and say, Son, with a smile, well done. That's what I want to hear. The scripture that King Fred read this morning, God forbid that Jesus will look at somebody and say, I don't know you. After going to church for decades, Jesus says, I don't know you. Say, God forbid. Amen. That would never be me. Amen. In Jesus' name. I have found David, my servant. I have found him. The heart I'm looking for. I have found it. So you see, God doesn't just release the power for wealth on just anyone. Just because you are praying. No, that is why I keep saying that as you are praying, God is looking at the heart. Do you know there are some people that are praying? If God should answer that prayer now, somebody somewhere will be in a serious trouble. Do you know that? Some people are praying. Because somebody has done something and they don't have the means to retaliate. So if my God shows up, I will let him know the God I say. That means if God should answer that prayer, somebody is in trouble. And God is looking at the heart. God is looking at the heart. There are women that Maybe their husbands, you know, do things that is not right. And he's praying for God to give her a job that will give her, bring $100,000 to her every month. And the prayer, the motive is, I know my, if God answers me, I will show this man the stuff I'm made of. Okay, and God is looking at the heart. Oh, you want me to start with you to what, disrespect your husband? To show him what? And there are men that are praying. Because maybe for now the wife makes more money. He is not making. And when, when anytime he says, you know, uh, can I have some coffee and cream and, and uh, what's the name of that thing? You use eggs and, uh, you know. Oh, what do you call it? Uh, Omelette. You know, can I have some omelette? And the woman will go, what, what omelette? What to cook one boiled egg and <laughs> last week I bought a crate of egg, you have finished everything. Else. Then the man said, Oh God. Me, I know God is going to bring to me. When God blesses me, this woman, I will let her know I'm a man. <laughs> You see, oh, this is, it sounds funny, but there are some of the little living that live in the lamb. The little foxes destroy the fire. It, it could be some of the reasons why things are delayed. The heart needs to be positioned right before God. So David, God found him. That is why, precious one, if you forget anything, don't forget this. God loves you so much. And your prosperity is his desire. I wish above all 
the wish of God above all things is your prosperity. And the Bible says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. But you see, God knows what prosperity can do if your heart is not really rooted in Christ. God knows what prosperity can turn you into if your heart is not rooted in Christ. That is why as you are praying, he wants to work on your heart. As you are praying, he wants to work on your heart. As you are praying, he wants to work on your heart. I think, um, was it Saturday? When was the Thanksgiving? Was it Saturday? Thursday. Thursday. Last Thursday, okay. Uh, I don't really bother myself with those things, so I've been really forgotten. And uh, my children started asking me some questions about Thanksgiving. And I said, well, there's that's, that's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a good thing. That is if we are thanking God. And then uh, uh, my son Prince brought up the history behind it. And then he said, Daddy, it's not about God. It's about what? The veterans, when they came back and this and that and this, I mean, he kind of explained the whole thing. He said, that was the celebration. And I said, okay, this is it. If we are thanking God, hallelujah. But if it is the thanksgiving is for because of the celebration, you know, of all those things, uh, then I have a problem with it. Because if you tell me thanksgiving, the question I ask is, who are you thanking? If it is the Almighty, then how are you doing it? You know, because we were trying to find out why this thing have turned into just cooking and eating and gathering. Where is God in it? And I said, because God is not in it, that is why all believers are doing it. Muslims are doing it. Buddhists and everybody. Today, somebody will walk with a head because of alcohol in the name of thanksgiving. And so, the, what we are doing is it pleasing to God. Are we really thanking God or we are just celebrating a festivity? And so we talk about it and I said, we don't have problem blessing God. That's our lifestyle. And we bless God every day. We don't wait for a day in a year to bless God. We bless God every day. But if it is a day that the country, the nation have decided, all the nation will come together this one day to bless God, that would be a wonderful day. But that's not what I'm seeing. It has just become a day of family reunion coming together and every techie in America is in trouble. You know, people just eating and drinking and all kinds of things going on. And we say, Thanksgiving. <coughs> Thanksgiving. And, and I was telling them, I said, well, I don't know. But the kind of father you have, there's something God is putting me. No matter what anybody does, I don't care. But when you associate it with God and it is not the right way, I will talk. I will talk about it. And do you know? That when we had that discussion, I think in the night after our midnight prayer, and I was just lying there in the culture, God just ministered something to me. He said, I'm going to amplify your voice in this nation. Amen. And I said, hey, that, that means what I said, I will do God likes it. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> He said, you are not just going to hold a microphone. I, God, myself, will amplify your voice in this nation. Yeah. And I shouted a big amen. You understand? The fact that it's accepted is gone on for years. If it's not in line with Bible, as a believer, you must address it. If somebody says, no, me, I'm doing my own thing. Fine, that one is your own. But if you say it is God, then it has to be done the way of God. You understand? So no, let's not fool ourselves with all this. Even Thanksgiving brought divorce. Not this one, but uh, it, I think so, a few years ago, happened and a friend called me and we were discussing it. Thanksgiving, because the man could not let them gather to something the wife wanted to do and bring friends and I, I think the man didn't have the 
finances to sponsor all that, and it became an argument. Boom, boom, boom. At the end of the day, the woman left. Because there is something I wanted to do on Thanksgiving, and we couldn't do it, and, and it brought a fight, and because of that, marriage is over. And we say we are thanking God in, in the name of Thanksgiving. We are divorcing in the name of Thanksgiving. And some people think it's nothing, you don't have to talk about it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, don't bring that one across trout. You understand? Uh, and somebody once said something to me, and the way I scream, you uh, didn't even know whether to say sorry or something. You know, what I don't like is when we are addressing Bible issues and you tell me, but every pastor, do, what do you mean? Do you know the blood that saved me? Do you know the hand that has brought me? Do you know the thing God has brought me to? You think I'm serving God on the basis of somebody's, some pastor's lifestyle or what they do? You understand? I respect servants of God. I salute the hand of God on his servants. But the Bible is my yastic. So don't tell me of oh, uh, uh, every pastor. And so what? Every pastor. Don't you hear pastors that are killing children, drinking their blood for powers? Does it mean we should also go and do it? Don't you hear pastors taking people's wife? That one I, exp I experienced on myself. I mean, not like experienced uh, who, who can take my wife. You know. <laughs> what I mean is, somebody that had experience it came to me. You understand? Very nice young man, had a very beautiful young lady, and they had an issue. So he reported the issue to the pastor, and the pastor said, let your wife come, let me talk. The woman entered the pastor's office, the pastor shook the head. Wow! Ha! But how can this guy have such a lady? And one thing led to another, the next thing they saw was that the pastor has love with the woman. And when the guy was telling me, one thing he said that I love, he said, Pastor, I just bought a brand new SUV and they will left with it. I said, look, are you concerned about your wife or the SUV? <laughs> and he's a pastor. I told you the other time, if I begin to talk about the wickedness of some pastors, you'll be shocked. Many people's destiny have been destroyed by some pastors. Many people's homes have been wrecked by some pastors. I'm not talking against the servants of God, no. But today, we have many people with a title pastor. Some are not even born again. You understand? That is why the Bible must be your yastic. Amen. Amen. I have found David, my servant. My prayer is that God will find you. Amen. And like David, God will mention your name. I have found my son in CBC. I have found my daughter in CBC. And so, the number one thing, when if you are going to be blessed by the power to be worthy, that is what God said in Proverbs 23, 26. My son, give me your heart. My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes delight in my ways. I'm reading the Amplified. My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes delight in my ways. Precious one, this is the foundation upon which we receive the power to be wealthy. My son, give me your heart. Forget about all that is going on in your life. Forget about all the mess. Forget about the hardships. Forget about whatever sickness. Forget about whatever the enemy thinks he's doing. Just give me your heart. Can I have your heart? There are glorious things I want to do with your life, but I will not force myself into your life. And I cannot do it until I have your heart. I have to be the one controlling your heart. I have to be the king sitting on the throne of your heart. I have to be the one dictating your life. And if you will let me do it, then here is the release of the power to be worthy. Because I, 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 
As far as my agenda is concerned, to use you, you must be worthy. You understand? You must be worthy. And because you have given me your heart, now I can control your life. I can dictate the direction you go. I can make you love the people. When I release wealth into your life, it will do the things I want you to do because I'm in, I'm in control of your heart. Anything I lay on your heart, you will do it because I'm the one controlling it. And you willingly gave it to me. I did not force it. And so when we come to that point of saying, Father, I give you my heart. Sometimes we sing it, but we don't mean it. Father, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I have and every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. We sing it by a lie. We don't mean it. And so when we are singing, God is looking. It's, you see, it's one thing to sing with your mouth and it's another thing to sing with your heart. My son, give me your heart. Maybe I have planned that when God breaks me through by the power of wealth, He breaks me into the hundreds of millions, and I have decided that um, David, I, I will show him. Eh? Okay, hey, eh, remember the, the other time I was talking to him? Look at what he, he said. You, but now I have given the heart to God, so God not now turns my heart. And instead of doing that to David, now when I see him, I love him. Now what God has given to me becomes a blessing. I use it to bless him by life. It's motivated by love. So you see why God wants your heart first. And so let me say it to everyone and those watching me on TV, social media, whatever, from any country. Let me tell you, don't fool yourself. There is a certain level of wealth that God will never release it into your hand until you have given him your heart. We will be enjoying mercy drops. Yes, he has promised us that. He knows you have to eat. You have to pay your bills. You have to do it. He will bless us to do all that. But what we are talking of becoming wealthy, your cup running over, becoming a blessing to your generation, you must have a Your heart must be in the hands of the Almighty. You must have a heart for him. My son, give me your heart. My son, give me your heart. My son, give me your heart. So important. Because when you give him your heart, God can now control your heart and you will find yourself wanting to serve God with everything that you have. Because your heart is now with Him. And remember what He says, where your heart is, there your treasure will be. Where your heart is, so you, you don't need to tell me where your heart is. I can look at your lifestyle and I will know where your heart is. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be where your heart is many people are in church praising god growing in all kinds of stones receiving all kinds of prophetic whatever for god's blessing and all that they are they want is to satisfy it on their fleshly desires like james said to the church because their heart is in the world and so they want money to pursue the desires of their heart where your heart is, that is where your treasure will be. So once your heart is in God's hand, serving God is a thing of joy. It's motivated by love in the spirit of humility. You thank God for the privilege. Now, look at David. Do you know why God said, I have found David? This man gave and gave and he comes to bless God for the privilege. Who am I? Who are my people? 
then we should be given the privilege to bring our substance to you. Father, what do we have that we did not receive from you? We are bringing to you what is already yours. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for placing us in a position where we can bring sight things to you. Do you see that heart? No wonder God said I have found him. So look at it. God is not talking of perfection here. Because David was not perfect. He was not sinless. He was not flawless. But he had a unique heart for God. A unique, so precious one. It's all about your heart. Your heart. I would never preach God's word without preaching about the heart. It's all. All that we are doing, the singing, the dancing, the game, everything we are doing, God is looking at the heart. God is looking at that. You know, we can be in a church and then give it. People will be writing 1 million, 5 million, 10 million. And because very soon that's what is going to be happening in CBC here. Amen. You understand? And then praises, dancing, profession, I mean, uh, uh, excellent instrumentalist. And we are singing and dancing. And all of us are so that because we are multitude, tens of thousands of people. But then, you can, all of a sudden, you can single somebody out there. Uh, while people are putting in the millions, the offering time is like it just drops on five dollars. The dancing is just moving the body slow, you know that. <laughs> but then, the following week you hear testimony that thing God is doing in there, and, and you begin to ah, wait a minute, this lady she doesn't even dance well. When we were praying and people were praying with their heads shaking, he was just standing there quiet as if. You know, so why is God, you know why? Because with all that we are doing in the church, God is at the heart. Somebody can be quiet, yet deep in love with Christ. Somebody can be quiet, yet the person has released the heart and everything in him to Christ. He serves God with joy. And so when your heart is in God, this is it. God will now empower you to do the things that, that qualifies you to receive the power. Amen. Amen. And one of those things are service. You understand? One of those things are service. That is why he said, if they are willing, if, if they obey and serve, then they shall spend their years in prosperity, days in pleasure, if they are willing and they serve. So he now empowers you to fulfill that scripture. So he will be just to put you in the realm of pleasure and prosperity. Because he has your heart. In Isaiah 119, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, so you have given your heart to him. So he empowers you with the grace to obey. To obey him. He empowers you with that grace. To obey him. He empowers you with the grace. Because obedience is not in the energy of the flesh. Obeying the, the, the word of God. Hey, hey. Uh, you don't know. You think obedience is a... When we talk of walking with God, obeying him is, is an engracement. In this flesh, because there are some things God will ask you to do in order to bring you to the realms of pleasure and prosperity, and it will look too dangerous. We never read that Moses stammered anywhere until God told him you are going back to Egypt. You understand? When he saw the fire, he got there, the voice came, hey, remove thy standard quickly. And I could see he was rejoicing. As today I'm hearing the voice of the Almighty that they have been talking about. So he thought he was going to say, Oh Moses, I'm coming to bless you. Oh, you'll be great. The sheep from today, they will be 10 million sheep. And that's what Moses was expecting. But all of a sudden he said, Moses, I've heard the cry of my people, Israel, and I have come down to deliver you at this today. Get up, forget about the sheep. You are going back to Egypt. 
The moment he heard Egypt, Moses became a stammer. Uh, God said, keep talking. When you finish, you are going. Even if you lose your voice, you are going. So get up. Obeying God into the realms of glory. Precious one, physically speaking, sometimes it's not comfortable. Eh? It's not comfortable at all. That is why we need the grace to obey. The grace to obey. Amen. Yes. You are praying for God for a breakthrough. And now you have a, a ninety-five thousand dollars, and you have decided to go and buy a brand new SUV Tesla. And you are praying. God said, "Take the money and give it to my servant travel to enjoy it." Amen. Can you obey that? Uh, you see, Majesty. <laughs> no. What, what, what do you mean? You understand? The no is in the flesh. That's the flesh. But while God engraves her with all humility, we will do it. And so let's let's not don't let us behave as if we can walk with God in the flesh. No. We need accept it. I need grace to obey God. The only thing is let the way be there who are willing to do it. And so God sees it in your heart. Then, and God is not expecting you to walk with him in the energy of the flesh. So he knows he must give you the grace because the will is there. But if the will is not there, God will not force it on you. So you must first be willing. That is why he said, if they are willing and obedient. And precious or anything you are not willing, don't do it. Do you know you can obey without will? I can tell you to give me my car. And you, you, I mean, like in your heart, you don't want to, but maybe because I'm a servant of God and I said it in front of the wonderful congregation, uh, you couldn't say no. And so, okay, uh, and, and you give it. You, you see, when a smile is fake, mm-hmm. what the eyes? <laughs> when somebody is giving you a fake smile, look at the eyes of the person. The, the eye will be small. <laughs> that means the eye disagrees. <laughs> So you give me the key with a smile, but your eye will be small. And after I've taken the key, you go home and you are lying there insulting me. Mm-hmm. What nonsense is that? Are you the only pastor? I have been with many pastors. Nobody did it. <laughs> that, that means you obeyed, but you were not willing. And, and forget about any blessing. That's the truth. Forget it. You see what pastors are doing to people out there in churches? Taking money and God said bring this and God said so this is and God said this. People are not willing. They strategize how to make them bring the money. And there is no blessing in it. That is the truth. Let any pastor challenge me on that. Because we are a giving people. We are a giving church. Amen. But have we ever looked at somebody and told him bring this? No. And so all those things that they bully people, they pressure them, it's all fake. It's not God. If you are willing and obedient, when it comes to giving, you must first come into the understanding of the mystery of giving. Then you have the willing heart. And God gives you the grace. And with all love for God, you do it yourself. You are doing it and you are blessing God like David. Not when you don't even understand what they're asking you to do. And they said, you want this breakthrough, come and show this. What kind of God are you serving that you take money before he blesses you? Huh? A great man of God, Bishop Wendy Paul once said, he said, if God should take, was to take money before he blessed, I would be the last person he would have blessed. Because at that time, I did not have a time. But he had my heart. And look at him today. You understand? People are not in love with God. And they are telling them, God said, bring this. God said, bring that. God said, give this money. God, God will not take anything from you until he has your heart. Because he's not in me. The earth and the fullness thereof is mine. Yes. Shall we stand up to our feet? Job 36 says, love you. If they obey and serve him, 
Isaiah 1 19 said, If they are willing and obedient, and Job 36 11, if they obey and serve, they shall spend their days in prosperity. And yes, so you see, God, you anytime God talks about uh, prosperity, you hear the word service. So we are going to go into the mystery of service. You understand? If your life is not relevant to the kingdom of God, forget about service. That's the truth. If your life is not doing anything to promote, to increase, to enlighten the kingdom of God, forget about prosperity. Just stay with mercy drops. You have food to eat, you pay your bills, you pay your mortgage, you are able to fill your tank, and uh, those things sometimes even your tank you, you run out of gas and then uh, uh, you put the card in and uh, it said decline and then you know some people are more spiritual than god they put the card in the class then they start going in tongues so that the <laughs> machine will give the gas the i'm the i'm the child of god i command you in the name of jesus the bible says whatever i decree so you are decreeing to the machine Everyone in this commission, by the blood of Jesus and by divine destiny that the Almighty made, you are declared prosperous. Amen. You are declared a success. Amen. You are declared worthy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If they obey and serve, we, we can do this in the energy of the flesh. We need the grace, the empowerment of that grace for obedience and service. For obedience and service. For obedience and service. <laughs> Glory be to our Lord Jesus. We just have to have the willing heart to do it. And we are going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. This is what this commission stands for. Amen. And so those of you watching me on TV, on YouTube, whatever social media platform from whatever country, you want to receive our Lord Jesus, the only Savior of the world, the only way, the only truth, and the only life. If you don't have Jesus, it is not life. If you don't have him, it is not way. If it's the way to the Almighty. If you don't have him, you don't have the truth. There are no many ways that Jesus is one. No, it is only one way to the Almighty, and that is our Lord Jesus. So today you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior. So he will empower you, no matter what is going on around your life, empower you to live a glorious life. You want to Jesus to be your Lord. Pray this prayer with me with your heart. Thank you, my Lord, for today. Thank you for your word that has come to me. Today, I believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again. And I accept that I'm a sinner. That is why he died for me. Today, I come to you as a sinner. I ask you to forgive me all my sins. And today, with all my will and with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Father, that I'm born again. Thank you that I'm now a member of your kingdom. I'm a child of God. Thank you for this privilege. My name is written in the book of life. I give you all the glory. And I receive grace, Father, to walk with you and to serve you to the end. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we thank you for these wonderful ones that you have called commit them into your hands we bring them under the covering of the blood of our Lord Jesus and we pray God that your mighty hands will be with them Father plant them under your servant that you can use to raise them that everything about their life will bring glory to the name of our Lord Jesus thank you and thank you and thank you we celebrate these souls with heaven and we give you all the glory in Jesus mighty name Amen. 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 Glory.